Well, hello and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy, and welcome to another episode of Flat Earth Can't Science. Hey guys, this is Bob the Science Guy. I'm going to be doing a video on the Earth's rotation and how to observe it from the surface. But before we do that, I want to go ahead and see what the Flat Earth community has to say about the rotation of the Earth. In this video, we are going to provide answers for the question, does the Earth actually spin? Let's get started. Do you guys see the irony in a video being put out by something called FlatEarthSolutions.com that shows a rotating spherical Earth in their intro? I do. Modern science and astronomy tells us we are traveling some 24,000 miles around at the equator each day in a 24-hour period. This means we are spinning at 1,000 miles per hour every moment of every day at the belt line of planet Earth. We are some 93 million miles from the Sun and additionally traveling some 583 million miles around the Sun in 365 days. This equates to some 68,000 miles per hour or 1,000 miles per second. We are additionally told that our solar system travels around our entire Milky Way galaxy over a 25,940 year time period, or also known as Plato's Great Year. This means our entire solar system, led by the Sun is also moving at over 500,000 miles per hour. Boy, those are some pretty impressive math skills. However, simply because you're having difficulty wrapping your head around those numbers does not mean that the argument is false. That's actually a logical fallacy. Now that logical fallacy actually has a name and for some extra credit, why don't you write it in the comments below. Wow, that's a lot of motion and spin going on. Yet we never, ever felt any motion. Now the question is, is based on orbital mechanics, should we feel this motion? Scientific Explanation Scientists explain that the mass of the Earth is too big to feel any of this motion. Actually, that's not what science says at all. What science says is that we sense motion when we undergo acceleration or deceleration. As we are not undergoing acceleration or deceleration, we don't sense any motion at all. Now the video will awkwardly switch context and come up with some very interesting flat earth rhetoric. When we travel in an airplane we can go east to west or north to south or west to east or south to north and except for jet streams, weather, and trade winds, we arrive at our destinations at relatively the same time. Now, the thing that is very interesting about that little piece was that they specifically mentioned trade winds. Trade winds are directly caused by the rotation of the Earth. The distance from San Francisco to Hawaii, east to west, is nearly equidistant as the air miles and time traveling from San Francisco to New York, west to east. How is this possible on an Earth that is rotating from the west to the east at 1,000 miles per hour? Okay, now that's a very good question, and the answer is actually in the question. The air miles are approximately the same. Now, while you may have headwinds or tailwinds, the distance an aircraft travels is the air miles, and their speed will determine how quickly they travel that distance. Okay, now this is a problem that is very common in the Flat Earth community. They seem to view the surface of the Earth and the atmosphere of the Earth as two completely different and independent systems. The reason that aircraft travel the same distance in the same time is that they are literally traveling the same distance. There is no compensation made for the rotation of the Earth. Using their logic, I could rise in a balloon in New York wait three hours and then descend in San Francisco because the earth would have rotated underneath me at a thousand miles an hour which is nearly twice the speed of a commercial airliner. If I am traveling from San Francisco to Hawaii on a commercial jet traveling at 500 miles per hour 
I should travel the 3,000 miles to Hawaii in just one and a half hours instead of the five and a quarter hours it takes since the Earth is spinning towards the plane some 1,000 miles every hour. If I am traveling west to east from San Francisco to New York City, in the direction the Earth is spinning at 1,000 miles per hour, and my plane is traveling at only 500 miles per hour, I should never be able to make it to New York City. This is a variation of what I just uh, brought up. If the Earth is rotating away from you at 1,000 miles an hour and you're only traveling at 500 miles an hour, you should be backing up. In reality, since you're traveling the same distance, it takes the same amount of time, give or take headwinds and tailwinds. When Felix Baumgartner made history in 2012 and jumped from 24 miles up reaching speeds of over 800 miles per hour and free fell for over 4 minutes. Yet he never had to adjust for an Earth that would have moved some 66.66 miles from where he actually landed while in free fall. As Felix Baumgartner ascended in the balloon, the balloon was carried with the winds. He did end up landing some 50 miles from where he launched. Scientific explanation. We are all inside atmospheric cocoon, held in by Newton's laws of gravity and Einstein's theory of relativity. Newton's law of gravity is why Felix Baumgartner fell to the ground instead of going off into space or just floating there. The key thing on this one is Newton's first law of motion. A body in motion will remain in motion. A body at rest will remain at rest, unless an outside force acts upon it. Yet when dropping a kite rises in wind, a feather floats gently to the ground. A book falls with force generated and brick falls faster than all. And there is no place science describes where this earth bubble ends in our atmosphere and the 1,000 miles per hour per minute plus 1,000 miles per second plus 500,000 miles per hour are ever felt. Okay, there's a lot to unpack there. First, congratulations, you've discovered gravity. Second, you've made note of the effect that wind resistance and lift have on gravity. Clearly, a feather has more wind resistance per mass than a brick does. As a result, the brick falls at closer to the rate of gravity, whereas the feather is held back by the wind resistance, and a kite generates lift based on outside force, the wind pressing on it. Now, this concept that we all live within a bubble of the atmosphere does have some merit, except they are completely misinterpreting it. The atmosphere of the Earth is agreed to extend to 100 kilometers above the surface. There is no point in that atmosphere that we have some demarcation where the bottom of the atmosphere goes with the Earth and the top of the atmosphere stands still and has a relative 1,000 mile an hour wind in it. The entire atmosphere rotates with the Earth. Now, the final thing that they're talking about here is the movement through the solar system and through the universe. These are governed by Kepler's laws, and there is no acceleration or deceleration with them. We basically follow a smooth curve, the path of least resistance. Now note how the same altitude there are two completely different Earth horizons taken from the... Okay, I'm just going to finish up with this. Um, this is a typical... Let's throw the red herring in there and see if we can muddy up the waters a little bit. The photograph on the left, if you look at the boom above Felix and you look at the contours of the capsule, etc., that's a standard photograph. The one on the right is obviously taken with a fisheye. You can see the curve of the capsule and you can definitely see the curve of the boom. Now the fact that these pictures appear to be taken from slightly different distances and the fact that there are two cameras very clearly on that top boom indicates that these were basically two different photographs taken with two different cameras, one with a normal lens, one with a fisheye lens. Well, I'm going to go ahead and finish up on this note. I just wanted to let everybody know that 
I actually have a video coming out on the rotation of the Earth in five to six different ways that you can observe this rotation from the surface and confirm it for yourself. So that video should be out in the next two or three days, and I hope that you have a chance to look for it. So this is Bob the Science Guy. Happy New Year, everyone, signing out from Northern Michigan. I also wanted to thank everybody for building this channel from 15 to over 1,500 viewers in less than a month. Hit that subscribe button in the upper left corner and see our other videos.